let's take a look at the Piazza San Marco and how it came to be. Now, the Church of San Marco was built in the 11th century um, at a time in which Venice had become even more wealthy uh, and was doing business all over the Mediterranean. They had quarters in all of the major cities of the Eastern Mediterranean, including Constantinople, um, which was the big city um, back in the 11th century. And they wanted a big church. They wanted a church that really demonstrated their wealth and, and their new position that they had in the world. And they wanted it for their greatest relic, the body of St. Mark. In this one, they wanted something that was really made a statement. And so they're businessmen. The Venetians are businessmen. They're not artists. So they go to hire the very best artists and architects from Constantinople. Then when they ask them what they wanted their church to look like, they don't really, they don't really know. Um, they just wanted it to be the best church possible. So they look around Constantinople. Uh, the best church there is Hagia Sophia. Well, they can't afford that. That's too big. What's the second best church? Well, that's the Church of the Holy Apostles um, in Constantinople. We'll take that one, they say. And so they, that's, they don't want anything special. They just want them to make a copy of the Church of the Holy Apostles from Constantinople in Venice. And so that's what they do. Um, San Marco is actually a copy of the Church of the Holy Apostles. It's useful um, for us historians because uh, the Church of the Holy Apostles doesn't survive. It was destroyed in the 15th century. Um, so this is this is it. This is what it looked like, and this is, uh, this is it still exists. It was finally finished in 1094, and um, and that's what it uh, that's when it really came into play. But it would always be, although it was a Dugal, considered a Dugal chapel, a chapel of the Doge, it was always the primary focus for Venetians because it was their patron saint. It was the identity of their republic. Now, the area around it did not look like the current Piazza San Marco at all. I should say the interior of the church is also very Byzantine. All of the walls are covered in mosaics um, of saints, but also a lot of biblical um, stories um, that are, are, are put on the walls so that people can see them. It's an amazing place. Um, the real reason that they paved everything to become a major piazza had to do with this man. In the 12th century, the German emperor, the Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick Barbarossa, had spent several decades waging war in Italy. The reasons for this need not detain us, but he was fighting against the Lombard League, which was a league of city-states in Italy. And it was also supported by the Pope, Alexander III. To make a long story short, the final peace came together in 1177, um, where the emperor was going to make peace with the Pope. And they decided that they needed a neutral territory to have that, that event. Venice had never been involved in any of this. And so they decided to do it at Venice, because as they said, Venice was subject to God alone. So there was going to be an enormous event coming to Venice, something that had never happened before. The most powerful and important people in Europe were going to come to Venice. And so at that time, they had their church. This is the church of San Marco. They had a, the palace of the Doge which was also the government complex, which was a fortress. But everything that you see here in the Piazza San Marco that all the tourists go to now, that was all grass and mud and a river that flowed right through here. Here's what it looked like. Uh, here's the fortified palace. Here's San Marco. Here's lots of mud the Campanile for San Marco, and then just other houses. And here's the Rio Batario, the river that went right through it. Here you can see it on the map. Here's the Rio that went right through it. Well, the Doge at the time, Sebastian Muziani, wanted to turn this into a show place. 
And so what he did was he tore down the church of San Gimignano. There was an orchard here. He tore down the orchard. He filled in the river and he paved this entire L-shaped piazza. This portion is the main piazza. This part is called the piazzetta. It just means the little piazza. Um, and then he rebuilt the church later over um, here. The church doesn't exist anymore. So that's why it looks like it does today. Um, what he wanted was for the piazza to be a large area here that would be open, that people could come to for this event. And then he wanted the piazzetta, which goes right up to the bacino of the water. That's where the Pope and the emperor would arrive from. And he wanted them to be able to process right up to this location there. And so that was set up. The piazzetta today, which is usually filled with people, um, it also has two columns here. Um, uh, Ziani set those columns up too. These, these are monolithic columns. They're not pieces of a column. They're all one stone, uh, which means they're very uh, fragile, difficult to tr for them to have brought them there. They came from Greece. Um, and these were erected with great difficulty. In fact, the story is that they actually brought three and that one of them, when they tried to erect it, it actually slipped into the water and was lost in the mud. Um, there have been some, most recently in 2016, there have been some sounding attempts to try to find it. So far, they haven't found it. Um, I tend to think it's probably just a story. Um, I think they probably just brought the two. But then on the top of them, they put the symbols of their two patron saints. Here, the symbol of Saint, Saint Mark. This is the, the symbol of Saint Theodore, who had been the patron saint of Venice for a short time um, before Saint Mark. And so the big event came. The Peace of Venice it was incredibly important for Venetians. Um, they have a you can tell by how many paintings were done of this. If you go through the the, um, the Palace of the Doges, you'll see in the in the Council Chamber, you'll see all sorts of paintings of this event. They, it was very important to them. And here you can see the two columns, and here you can see the Pope Alexander the Third, and here is the Holy Roman Emperor kissing his feet. Uh, and with that, that sealed the peace. Um, and everyone rejoiced. It was also believed by the Venetians that the Pope also began the ritual of the Sensa. Um, this is uh, the commemoration of the Ascension of Jesus. Um, and this ritual was done every year. It actually predates um, 1177. Um, what this was, was a ritual that the Venetian Doge and his people would do every year. They would go out in a ceremonial uh, procession on the water. They would go out to the point at which the Adriatic begins. And then the Doge would hope have a golden ring and he would marry the sea. He would have Venice marry the sea. Um, and he would say, we espouse the O.C. as a sign of true and perpetual dominion. So the idea was that Venice and the sea were, were bound together. They were married. It was a big event. In most recent years, they've kind of actually restarted it again um, for the tourists. Uh, there's no doges anymore, but they usually get somebody to do the honors, the mayor or someone like that. And they'll row out there and throw a ring into the water. Um, but for, for the Venetians, for many centuries, it was a, a very important uh, ritual.